Hello everyone and welcome to another new series. In this one, I'm going to be playing with some Lego, something to do during the quarantine lockdown. I've always had this idea about making one of the big Star Wars Lego models, preferably the X-Wing, but I've never really wanted to spend, what, they're sort of 400 to 1,000 pounds, presumably depending on condition and whether they're boxed and stuff like that. So I thought, well, I've got loads of Lego lying around. Why not um, have a go with, with that and see what I can uh, see how far I can get before I start struggling? So I had a quick um, trial run with a smaller model and found there were a lot of fiddly little pieces that I just didn't have. So I thought, maybe try one of the bigger ones. And here we are, I'm trying to find some sort of bits to go in the, uh, in the, sort of the underside of the main fuselage that are, the, that are the, roughly the right shape. Eventually I had to give up and I went to, I sort of pixelated it a bit. So there's, um, it's, it's gonna be a slightly squarer X-Wing than um, intended in places. And these um, pieces on the top, the, sort of the slightly thicker ones, I don't have those triangular wedge-shaped pieces, so I ended up using just uh, rectangular bricks instead. But I think there's going to be enough general pieces going into this that the whole overall shape will still look generally quite X-wingy. Um, oh yeah, don't um, don't try this at home, kids. Don't use a knife or your teeth to pull Lego bricks apart. It's, they're both bad ideas. Um, I'm just yeah <laughs> hoping for the best. So yeah, I, th I think this is going to be quite interesting. Obviously I don't have any of the pieces in the right colours, so it's going to be the world's most flamboyant X-Wing. But hopefully it'll look quite good when it's once it's actually finished. So this part of it wasn't too bad. I've got lots of long pieces, I've got lots of, lots of the flat pieces. I'm still not quite sure what these flaps I'm putting on the side here are, whether what these sort of little winglets are. I should probably have a look at the original drawing again and, uh, and, try, and try and work it out from that. I, I've got most uh, reasonable approximations at this point. So it, yeah, it's, um, it's coming together quite well. Here we are comparing some of the sort of the wedge triangular spaceshipy pieces, but again, none of them are quite quite the right ones. So um, I'm just going to end up resorting to big, big rectangular pieces and then some squares and just getting the rough shape. It took a lot of sorting through all the bricks, of course, to find all the all the uh, all the bits I was looking for. But it was yeah, it's, it's been interesting. It's been a bit of a diversion during, uh, as I said, during the uh, quarantine lockdown as well. So it's um yeah quite nice. There seem to be a lot of these smooth top parts going into it, so I was, I was trying to work out why, and I think um, I later realised that there's supposed to be some bits going in here at funny angles, which are, uh, <laughs> spoilers, going to be a bit tricky later on, and these bits are for them to slide over so they don't um, catch on the on the uh, pips of the of the normal Lego pieces. It's also surprisingly hard when you're making it up a bit as you go along to actually get all the right pieces for each stage, so there's been a few times when I've gone through a, gone through a step and then come back to it later because I've realised I've missed a couple of pieces. Generally, um, it, it's, going re it's going reasonably well so far, I think. And we've got these tall, sort of C-shaped pieces at the, um, at the back of the sh ship there. And I spent quite a while trying to find something that was about the, that was approximately the right shape for those sort of things. And eventually, just completely gave up. And, and having got a bit further on in the in the, uh, in the model, I realised there's absolutely no point having those shape pieces in there at all there because they're completely hidden once you get the um, once you get a bit more of it assembled so they might as well just be the the normal bricks that I ended up using instead at this point as you can see I'm just sorting the bricks out a bit trying to find the uh, trying to find the ones I want and also sorting out into sort of flat ones thick ones weird ones and general little bits of rubbish and also all of the bigger pieces that are just things like castle walls and ship hulls and uh, wheels and things that can't be used for anything else. They're very, very specific, and I feel they're sort of not in the in the real um, spirit of what Lego is intended was supposed to be. I feel that Lego bricks are much better when they're just sort of all, when they're very, very general purpose. And there are quite a lot of, and I think maybe part of the reason <laughs> I feel that way is there are a lot of bricks in this build that aren't very general purpose, and those ones are difficult to find. But that, that said, with it being quite a large model, it's actually not too bad. Most of them are reasonably general purpose bricks. I don't think I've, I don't think I've come across any that are com too specific, apart from the um, apart from the cockpit canopy, which I'll, uh, I'll come to a bit later. <laughs> now here we are building up a, a seat to go in the, in the ship. And this is, again, rummaging around trying to find lots of hinges and flat pieces and stuff like that. And I, I actually, I was quite surprised I did manage to find these hinges and get, get this bit built up. Yeah, there's a sort of approximation of the of the flat smooth pieces as well. Uh, some of them have got big arrows, some of them have got computer screens drawn on them, but you know, it, it's the, the flamboyant X-Wing and it's going to look rather colourful. 
maybe I should have gone through before I actually got started and just sorted them all out and into into the various different categories I've come up with. But I was impatient. I just I just wanted to get started and uh, and building things, and so I, I put it together as uh, and started sorting as I went along. And yeah, it, it slowed me down a little bit from time to time, but it uh, it, it keeps it varied, I suppose. Now see, again, the, uh, the smooth bits for bits of the, um, the later fuselage to uh, to rub along or not rub along. There's quite a lot of um, sort of just just general greebling and um, detail on the outside. Most of which I've I've had to skip because I just I again it, it's specific pieces. It, um, so yeah, okay. There's meant to be vents and radiators and things down the side of it. The cockpit computer is meant to have the Death Star trench in it on the screen in it, but. I've had to approximate with what I've got. Uh, that's why there's a couple of go faster arrows on the front of the nose there. Um, oh, here we go. These are the, these bits are quite interesting. They're, they're these long, um, long straight pieces that, that I'm, I'm building up at the moment are designed to be the sort of the, the slightly inward sloping sides of the of the fuselage to give it a slightly more pointed and streamlined uh, shape. So you build up these long, long pieces like this. And then they went, and then they get they sort of they're they're attached with hinges in order to make them um, swing inward slightly, and uh, and fit the shape of the craft better. So there's there's some quite clever ideas in the design here, and it's yeah it's uh, interesting and uh, only, only tripped me up a few times. <laughs> and again, this has got all of the um, the pips along the sides of it for, with the uh, the greebling uh, for you to attach sort of vents and smooth patches and yeah greebles are apparently a technical term that LucasArts used for um, the the little details that you stick on the model of a spaceship to make it look bigger than it bigger than the model and to begin to give it a bit, bit of interest so it doesn't just look like um, a completely smooth shape which would be rather dull. Now this is one of the first major problems I had those hinges so the one the white one in instruction one there. I actually don't have any of those, so at the moment I've, I've messed around a bit with some round pieces and sort of swiveling on them and that sort of thing. And it's all a bit, it's a bit weak really. It falls apart when you when you nudge it a bit too hard. So I've actually, um, I know I said I was trying to build this from just the parts I've got lying around, but I've actually ended up buying a load of those hinges on eBay. There's a pack of eight or something I think for about two, for about three quid. So I didn't feel too bad about spending the money on them. The hinges on the front end, actually, that it turned out I did. I, well, I found one of them ver fairly quickly, so that that is actually held on prop. Will, will be held on properly. Um, there we go. There's the other side there. It's a bit of a uh, made in the gap between videos, unfortunately, um, but it's the same, exactly the same for the other, but mirrored for the to go on the other side. Um, I didn't manage to find a hinge for this one at the time, although I did a bit later. So that one's going to be held even less well than the other side. <laughs> But as I said, I've got the proper hinge, the proper thin hinges coming um, for the back end. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, actually, so I'll get them fitted then, and I'll be able to uh, get a bit further on with the with the build. Wiggle it into place, and yeah, you can see from the way I'm sort of fiddling with it, you can tell that it's it's not quite held together as well as I'd like. It's not falling apart too much. I mean, it, it's it's good enough that I was able to carry on and put a few more bits bits and pieces together. I, I, I'm glad I've ordered the hinges, let's put it that way, but as it is, it's, it's not doing too badly. Does it look reasonably similar to the model on the screen? To the uh, diagram, that is? I think it does. It's, it's it's certainly the right shape. I think it's... Well, at this at this stage, I'm not sure it's recognisable as an X-Wing, but um, I'm not really all that far through it yet. Hopefully it will be eventually. Right, the next step, uh, which bits? Oh no, this is the this is the this is the front of the um, of this front fuselage part. It's the um, the yellow piece in the diagrams, as opposed to the black piece in well, the one version I've built, is um, supposed to allow the the actual nose cone to clip on. So we'll um, get to that in a moment. And now some more flat pieces to go on the top, so bits can rub up against each other without having issues. There we go. Because the nose cone fits on in quite a weird way, as you'll you'll see in a few moments. Um, so now here we are. This is the this is the bulbous nose that goes on the front of it. Um, maybe that's supposed to house radar and stuff like that. Who knows? But it's um, it's a, in this model. It's a separate piece that you then sort of try and attach on afterwards. So here we go. It's take, taking shape nicely. I seem to have a lot of these slanty pieces, which is uh, <laughs> quite quite good because it's uh, they are getting used in quite large large numbers. What do I need now? Whatever it was, I managed to I think I managed to find it. 
I mean, these L, little L-shaped pieces are quite difficult to find as well. I don't have... It, the model seems to demand enormous numbers of them and I only have a few, so I've, I've run out quite quickly and had to sort of make, thing else, make other things up later, but... At this point, I think I was, was just about finding them. And they're also quite small, so they disappear into the bottom of the tubs and, uh, yeah, just hard to find. Ah, now this is another part. This is the part I've really had problems with. So, what we've got here is a sort of a friction fit clippy thing <laughs> that they put between two one by one tall pieces with a single hole in, and I don't have any of those. I've got two by ones with a hole in, but that's offset, so it's, it's between studs rather than on, on uh, in line with the studs. So I just don't have, I didn't have any of these. So what I eventually end up, ended up with was one of the sort of the um, bits that allow you to stick a, I don't know how to describe them, one of these bits, here's a picture, um, with a, a gear piece sticking out the back, an axle sticking out the back of it, but that didn't clip into the, um, into the it was very, very loose, it kept falling out, it didn't clip into the bit on the front of the X-Wing, it just just generally didn't work and that was yeah it, I, I was really struggling to find a way to get this to um to fit onto the, onto the front of the x-wing with the uh, with the pieces that i had there you go see you see, see there on the back it's just it's not very well attached and it doesn't it doesn't fit solidly into the into the piece on the craft so there's just no hope of it actually attaching there another problem i had was these these long slanty bits this this one you can see that there's there's one in the middle and then one on either side. I didn't have any of those, so again, I've I've approximated with uh, three stud long slants and the two stud long slants. It's not quite the same shape, but after I, I fiddled with it quite a bit, and I sort of swapped swapped the pieces around and and kept and tried different configurations of them. And I think in the end, whilst I didn't get quite the shape that they've got in the um, in the diagram there, it's it's close enough, and I'm I'm generally pretty happy with it. And with it being quite a large model, I mean, I think that the whole thing, once it's finished, is about 50, 60 centimetres long. So for a Lego model, that's pretty big. Uh, with it being that long, I think little bumps and things, things that aren't quite the right shape and don't have quite the right details in the right, quite the right place, your eye will just sort of move straight over without really noticing because it's more or less the right shape. And here we go, we've got some pegs on the side here for a bit more greebling, I think. I can't remember whether those bits stick on there or not. But again, those are sort of the, the sort of details that I'm, I'm not so bothered about missing out on because, oh yeah, there we go, there's just a flat panel stuck on the side of it to make it a tiny bit wider. The point of this bit, as I was saying, is that the clip coming out of the back of the nose cone goes into the front of the of the fuselage. And, and, that, and the reason they've done that is because the fuselage is four four studs wide and the nose cone at the same place is about three studs wide so it's meant to be a slightly different width and as you can see that's just falling out every time I try to put it in so they wanted to make the, the very front um, an odd number of studs wide and, and the further back an even number and so you have to have some sort of way of converting between the two and their way of doing it was to have the friction fit um, socket going into a, an offset a socket that's offset between two studs um, but as I say, I just I couldn't get that working. <laughs> I did eventually find one of the appropriate axle pieces that would have clipped into the front of the fuselage, but that still wouldn't have been a good enough, a strong enough fit inside the uh, the bit on the on the back of the nose cone, and so it would have fallen out anyway. But that can come along in a, in a, uh, a later episode. I did manage to solve this problem, and I'll show you how I did it then. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.